What's up friends and welcome back to my channel. This week we're talking all about the iPhone 12. Yes, the low lighting camera is bananas, but I'm not here to talk about the specs. This video is gonna be all about optimizing your new iPhone for health, specifically around sleep. I'll be sharing my customized home screen and walk you through all the apps and widgets I use to help streamline my nightly routine. Now, I decided to go with the Pro Max, but my fiance went with the Mini, and so he'll be joining me for the second half of this video to talk about why he made the switch and what it has done for his focus and productivity. So stick around. But first, if you're new here, welcome. My mission is to help you achieve success without sacrificing your health or happiness. I do product reviews weekly, so if you're into this, click that subscribe button and join the Type A tribe. So when it comes to sleep, you can pretty much use any iPhone or Android device to customize your layout. But there's something about getting a new phone that really makes you rethink your entire phone layout. And so I'm gonna be sharing with you my new and improved sleep screen, along with all the apps and widgets I use to help improve my sleep. So as you'll see here, on the upper right-hand corner, I've organized all my sleep tracking apps. Now, side note, I do realize that not everybody has three or four devices to track their sleep. So this is just an example of what you can do. And I am certainly not recommending that everyone go out and buy four sleep devices, unless you are a total sleep data nerd like myself. Now, with the exception of the Fitbit, all of these devices can actually sync up to your Apple Health. So keep in mind, if you do wanna make some type of dashboard like this, you'll wanna get a device that also syncs to Apple Health. Back to the phone. So right now I'm using 8sleep to regulate the temperature of my mattress cover throughout the night. It also comes with a sleep tracking feature that can help determine things like your time in bed and wake up consistency. I love this thing so freaking much and so my full product review will be coming out soon. Next, you'll find my Dream app, which is connected to my Dream 2 headband. Now this is looking at my brain waves through EEG sensors to determine my sleep stages, and it's pretty much one of the most accurate sleep trackers I found on the market so far. Underneath those are my two other sleep trackers, the Fitbit Sense and the Aura Ring. Now both of these also double as my activity trackers by measuring things like total steps, calories burned, and recovery time. And then those stats get factored into my total sleep score for the night. On the bottom left side is what I'm calling my sleep experiment corner, including the Apollo Neuro, which uses low frequency inaudible sound wave technology, the Happy device based on low intensity magnetic fields, the New Calm, which is an app that plays proprietary binaural beats, and the Sensei, a device using bone conduction technology to regulate your vagus nerve. And yes, I realize that makes me sound like a huge freak. So these eight apps are my essential go-tos each night for promoting better sleep and tracking my results. Now I've also added some widgets to this screen to help keep my sleep on track. At the very top, you'll see a widget from the app Streaks, which includes my top three sleep habit reminders. Blue blockers by 8 p.m., stop eating by seven to allow three hours for my stomach to digest, and meditate before bed. The health view widget on the left-hand side is a quick overview of my total sleep time based on pretty much whatever device I've selected it to pull from. Now, before I jump ahead, let me show you how to do this. First, make sure Health View and any app that aggregates your health data is listed in the Data Access and Devices section of Apple Health. So to do this, you'll go into Setting, select Apple Health, then open Data Access and Device and click Health View and make sure all the categories that you want are turned on. So then you'll close out of settings and open up the Apple Health app and click the browse icon at the bottom. So here you'll scroll down to sleep, click that, and then keep scrolling to the bottom of that page until you see data sources and access. Now first, make sure the apps you're tracking are selected to read your data at the top and then scroll down to see your data sources. So here you can organize the order in which Apple Health is pulling in your sleep data. As you'll see here, it's first pulling from my dream. If it doesn't have dream data, it pulls from the Aura Ring, then eight sleep and so on. And to arrange the order here, click edit at the top and adjust as you see fit. Now I'll also include a very detailed step-by-step -step breakdown in the show notes below. So don't worry about writing everything down. It will be there if you wanna follow along. Back 
to my sleep screen. And finally, the widget on the bottom right corner is a stack of streaks that automatically pull in data from my dream device, or Aura as a backup, including in bed by 10 p.m., asleep for seven hours, and wake up by 7 a.m. All of these are customizable through the Streaks app, and so here is a quick tutorial on how to do it. First, open up the Streaks app and click on the settings cog on the bottom left corner. Select add a task and then click on the heart icon in the taskbar at the top. You'll scroll down the page until you see the sleep section and click on in bed or bedtime. Here you can adjust your goal along with the specific days of the week that this applies. You'll then save the task and then whenever you complete this task overnight, the widget will automatically fill in with color if you completed it and remain blank if you didn't. I absolutely love the Streaks app for this reason and really think it is worth the $4.99 lifetime price tag. And I'll include a link below if you wanna go and check that out. So now let's move from the Max to the Mini as I bring on my fiance to talk about his surprising reasons for switching to the smaller device. I loved the iPhone 5. So when I saw the iPhone Mini, I had this wave of nostalgia for a time in my life when my phone wasn't a phablet. And after 10 days with this little guy, I'm definitely keeping it. Now, before I explain why I chose the Mini over the Pro Max, let me first show you how I've configured my phone for productivity. There is a phenomenal book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And in it, he outlines the four principles of habit change. To make a habit truly stick and be effective, you need to make it easy, obvious, attractive, and satisfying. So my home screen fills those first two laws by making it obvious and easy to accomplish. Every time I open my phone, all my habits are staring right at me. I've got all of my productivity goals right up front, and then all of my health and wellness goals as the second layer. I'm reminded to track my fasts, and I can quickly cycle through all of my basic exercise data collected by my Apple Watch. To the second law of making it easy, I've made all of my habits as low a bar as possible. I used to set lofty goals like exercise for an hour or read for an hour. And what I found was that at the end of the day, I'd look at that to-do item and go, oh, there's no way I'm gonna complete that, so why bother even starting? Now instead, I have goals like read one page, write one paragraph. Those types of goals are so much more achievable that you sit down to do it anyways. You're like, okay, I can, I can read one page of a book. And before you know it, I've read 20 pages. That way you're more inspired to just check that box off and it helps drive you into consistency with your habits. So what is it I love about the Mini and why am I sticking with it? For one, it's so convenient. It fits in any pocket, it's lightweight, it never gets in my way the same way that the Pro Max does. And last but not least, the main reason I'm sticking with the Mini over the Max is the way it's influencing my habits. I watch a lot of YouTube, everything from TED Talks to Among Us videos, and I found with the Pro Max from last year, I would often plop on the couch and waste 20 minutes watching some videos. It was very easy to find places in my day where just having my phone in my hand in my pocket made it very accessible to start watching that type of content. With the Mini, I find that that small shrink in size puts just enough barrier between me wanting to experience it on that device versus going and watching it on my laptop or my iPad that the time that I do end up on YouTube or Instagram or other apps like that is more enjoyable because I'm experiencing it on a larger device. And then it keeps me off my phone in those small moments so I'm not getting distracted as often. So if you're somebody who's looking for your phone to be your all-in-one device, the device that basically powers everything in your life, then I think the Pro Max is a great option. However, because I have an iPad and a computer and an Apple Watch, the Mini fills that gap for me on being that small device that's always available, easy to carry, is my quick reference device, where if I wanna sit down and consume or create content, I can do that on my iPad or on my computer. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Make sure to hit that notification bell and select all so you get notified each week when I drop a new video. And until then, I can't wait to see you on the next one.